Danger Zone, released at the end of May for PS4 and PC from Three Fields Entertainment, is a crack at bringing the Burnout franchise's crash mode back into the modern era. With Three Fields Entertainment comprised of some former Burnout developers, and with EA just sitting on the Burnout name these days, it's great to see some people getting together to try and carry at least some aspects of that incredible series into the modern era. Right off the cuff though, it's important to note that Three Fields Entertainment is a smaller studio, and that Crash Mode was just one slice of a fantastic pie in the Burnout games, so it's best to lower your expectations when it comes to the amount of content and polish in Danger Zone. If you're unaware, Burnout's Crash Mode was a weird vehicular puzzle game that was all about crashing vehicles, causing pileups, and accruing the ability to make your car explode to cause as much financial stress as possible to meticulously crafted intersections across various locales. They were interesting, addictive, absurd, and very unique, and a key part of what made Burnout great. The last time the mode was seen was in 2005's Burnout Revenge. 2008's showdown mode from Burnout Paradise was amusing, but no successor by any stretch. Which raises the real question here, is Danger Zone a true successor? The answer is a yes, though unfortunately not as enthusiastic a yes as I could have hoped. Danger Zone features 20 stages, each with unique layouts promoting different approaches to causing as much mayhem as possible. Each stage begins with a camera overviewing the design, which gives you a great chance to plot out your attack. Some maps require carefully executed jumps, some demand you to weave through traffic to reach the end, then use explosions to bring yourself back the way you came, etc. At its purest, the game shows that this gameplay style is still fun and should not be left in the past. However, some mood killers I'll touch on in a bit keep it from reaching the heights of any true crash mode. In addition to navigating through maps, there are also bronze and silver medals to collect as you weave through the stages. To reach the highest ranking in each one, you'll want to collect those medals in a very specific order. All four bronzes, then the two silvers. Once you've done so, a gold medal appears on the map and you'll need to figure out how to get to it. Doing them all in order grants you a huge cash bonus to your score, and a sense of satisfaction from pulling off the carefully strategic route you crafted to collect everything. Scattered through these maps as well are additional Smash Breakers, blatantly riffing on Burnout's Crash Breakers, which are the aforementioned explosions that will help you get around and are also near essential to collect. I say near essential because the actual physics of explosions can be... unreliable. Depending on the angle you activate a Smash Breaker at, you can either gain a lot of distance with tons of flips from hitting the ground in precise control, or a flat, short arc where touching the ground brings you to a halt instead of projecting you further. This can be intensely frustrating since pure luck will either promote or destroy your carefully crafted approach. I lost count of how many times I was brought to a stop right before the last gold medal I needed in a map. It does more to harm morale than encourage you to try again, since it's less of a skill deficit than a luck deficit. Other things bring the mood down as well. The car you drive just handles poorly. This is fine most of the time when you're just driving in a straight line with minimal weaving, but when you're expected to make a wide turn, the car just drifts itself into an awkward stop, and since you have no control of the camera until after a crash is initiated, this generally means you're sputtered out to somewhere you don't want to be and have to initiate a retry on the map. Then there are things which are just small disappointments instead of true issues. Like the fact that there's only one vehicle to use, or that the actual crashes on cars just change textures on them or make tires pop off. Part of what made Crash Mode so great was thinking about which vehicles would give you which results in certain maps, then watching the carnage unfold as cars twisted and contorted in grotesquely satisfying ways. You just can't get that here. Coupling that with the fact that there's only one environment and that it's a simulation no less, makes it feel sterile instead of exciting. And on the simulation note, if you're unfortunate enough to get pushed off the road into the bottomless pit under every track, you instantly fail and have to restart. I've had this happen a few times where I had more than enough score to complete the level, but had my efforts wasted due to events outside my control. That's frustrating. I got every trophy in Danger Zone, which would generally mean grabbing hold of a deep understanding of the way the game is designed and laid out to a point of being very good at the game. 
and I'd say for the most part I did. But my total time with the game, even with that in mind, was less than 10 hours. Considering the value proposition at play here, the game is priced accordingly, and that's fine. I think the most damning thing I can say about Danger Zone, as someone who is very excited to see this gameplay style return, is that after the short runtime, I wasn't hungry for more of what it was offering. Even during the ending hours, I desired wrapping it up more than digging in deeper. That's not the fault of Crash Mode itself. That's just the fault of a game that, while fun, has such an uninteresting and cold visual presentation that it's just kind of off-putting. I went and put a few hours into Burnout 3 after finishing Danger Zone just to be sure, and sure enough, I was having a fantastic time in Burnout 3's crash mode, so I know it's not just the gameplay not aging well or anything silly like that. The style works, in terms of mechanics. In terms of the true, real STYLE of the game, however, it just doesn't. I looked at this game as a finished product that was released, marketed, and sold, but to take a step back and just discuss it in a more general way though, the game was made by a small team with a very short development cycle to try and recapture a bygone gameplay mode. I'd love to see Three Fields Entertainment see enough success with this title to get to work on a Danger Zone 2 that polishes things up, makes them more appealing, and offers a bit more gameplay variety. Unfortunately though, Danger Zone, while fun, gets a bit bland the more time you put into it. I'd still recommend giving it a go if you liked Burnout. EA isn't going to appease you these days. But if you've not tried this type of game before, I have to recommend you go back to the older Burnout titles instead. This video was generously supported by the following patrons on Patreon. Thank you.